Buried deep in the scrolls and whispers of ancient agriculture lies a strange recipe, one that wasn't written down as fertilizer but described more like a living soil charm. It didn't come in a bottle or a bag. It didn't smell sweet. In fact, it was sticky, slow-rotting, and at first glance unappealing. Yet when buried in the earth, it acted like a magnet, pulling life from the shadows of the soil. Earthworms, microbes, and fungal threads surged toward it as if answering a silent call. This wasn't just compost. It wasn't mulch. It was something older, crafted from fermented leftovers of past harvests and layered intentionally with wild forest ingredients. Today, modern regenerative gardeners are rediscovering this technique, not by accident, but by necessity. Because when your soil is dry, dead, or compacted, no amount of chemical booster will bring it back to life. But this ancient blend, it wakes up the underground. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to make it using two humble ingredients you probably already have, a sticky, rotting compost juice and a light, moldy bedding from the forest floor. Together, they form a potion, one that earthworms can't resist, one that turns your soil into a living, breathing system again. Long before industrial agriculture, ancient farmers from the Amazon to Asia and Africa built soils that could sustain dense crops without ever using synthetic inputs. They didn't think of soil as a dead medium to inject with fertilizer. They saw it as a living body, one that needed feeding, breathing, and healing. In Japan and Korea, farmers collected leaf mold from mountain forests and fermented it with rice water and kitchen scraps. In Africa, some communities would dig ash pits mixed with organic waste, then bury the mixture under crop beds to enrich the soil over seasons. And in the Amazon, the people of the Terra Preta zones layered charcoal, bones, food waste, and microbial sludges into their planting zones. These weren't just compost piles, they were designed lures, earthworm and microbe magnets, and modern tests of these old sites still show rich loamy soil centuries later. What these farmers knew, without needing a microscope, was that when you bury a mixture that's already biologically alive, but soft enough for worms to chew, you don't have to till or fertilize, nature takes over. The first half of this forgotten blend is a soft, fungal-rich bedding. And you know, there's really nothing better than combining mature leaf mold with soaked cardboard to create it. Leaf mold is basically decomposed tree leaves, preferably gathered from a shady woodland or an old growth area. By the time it's dark and spongy, it's packed with fungal threads, bacterial colonies, and slow decaying fibers that feed the entire underground network. But leaf mold alone dries out fast, that's where the cardboard comes in. Soaked and broken down into a wet slurry, cardboard acts as a carbon sponge. It locks in moisture and gives worms a soft path to burrow through. When you mix the two, forest mold and cardboard, you get a material that mimics the forest floor, but one that's soft enough to bury and let it fuse with your bed soil. When placed just a few inches below the surface, this mix becomes a worm highway. The cardboard holds the water, the leaf mold feeds the fungi, and together they hold temperature and structure, preventing the soil from drying out or compacting. This is one half of the potion what the worms crawl into. The other half of the equation is where the smell and, honestly, the power comes in. Old regenerative systems didn't shy away from rot. In fact, they leaned into it. The second lure is made from what I call compost juice, that dark, smelly runoff or leachate that collects at the bottom of your compost bin or pile. On its own, this liquid can be way too strong to pour directly into your garden. But when it's used in moderation, and combined with a carbon-rich base like partially broken down alfalfa or hay, it actually becomes a powerful microbial brew. Alfalfa, especially when you leave it to soften and ferment in a bucket for a few days, produces triacontinol, a natural growth hormone that stimulates roots and soil life. When it's soaked in compost juice, it begins to ferment. The result? Well, it's a sticky, earthy, protein-rich mass that worms absolutely love. It smells like soil that's already halfway to becoming humus. What you've created here is bait. Not bait in the traditional sense, but in the microbial sense. It's oozing with nutrients, partially broken down, and honestly, it's just irresistible to the army of decomposers living just out of reach. 
Now here's where the real magic happens, when you combine both lures in the same raised bed or soil pit, but with just a little spacing between them. So, dig a shallow trench in your bed, no deeper than your wrist. Lay down a layer of the cardboard leaf mold mix first, then just beside or maybe even partially overlapping it, add a generous scoop of your fermented alfalfa and compost juice blend. The two should be close enough that moisture moves between them, but still you want them to kind of retain their own identities. What happens over the next 7 to 14 days is, honestly, extraordinary. The fungi from the leaf mold will start colonizing sideways into the alfalfa blend. Meanwhile, worms will move from the cooler, carbon-rich side into the warmer, protein-rich center. This microzone becomes an underground biome rich in oxygen, bacteria, beneficial nematodes, and fungal webs. As it matures, it doesn't just feed your soil, it rebuilds it. You don't need expensive fertilizers or packaged amendments to heal your soil. The problem with most dead or compacted beds isn't lack of nitrogen, it's lack of life. And these two ingredients, mature leaf mold with cardboard and fermented alfalfa with compost juice, bring every layer of soil life back into the picture. They create habitat, not just food. They hold moisture without waterlogging. And most importantly, they spark a slow burn decomposition process that keeps feeding your soil for weeks. This is why the technique has lasted across cultures and centuries. It doesn't rely on brand names or precision measurements, it relies on understanding decay as a generative force and building soil from the bottom up, not the top down. We don't have to reinvent the wheel to grow better gardens. Sometimes we just need to dig a little deeper into the past. The twin earthworm lures, the forest floor and the fermented field are simple, ancient and astonishingly effective. And when you bury them with care, you're not just feeding your plants, you're waking up an entire world under your feet Try this in a corner of your garden. Watch the texture change, feel the looseness in the soil, see the sudden arrival of worms where before there were none. It might feel like magic, but it's just ancient wisdom doing its slow, quiet work.